what a difference a few days can make. We left here last Sunday. We're getting ready to go into summer mode. Now we had a uh, surprise wet snowstorm. It's actually snapped off a bunch of branches. Oh, kind of hard to pick up in the camera, but there's a lot of snap branches up there. There's actually a nice little maple right there snapped off. This ironwood tree right here snapped off. Luckily it caught itself in the crotch of that ironwood tree. It comes over and it's laying on the cabin roof right there. Bunch of snow right there about to let go. Oh man, I see another big tree over there snapped off. You can see the debris here everywhere in the driveway. So we can get this one to stand back up again. Yeah, that one's just stuck in the snow. Looks like another ironwood right here broken off. Snapped right off up there. It's gonna be a little bit of cleanup around here. Another one there. I should just notice I'm standing underneath this big tall ironwood right here. It's leaning right out over me and right out over the outhouse. It's just tangled up in those couple branches right there is all it's holding it from falling down. So we got the fire going and the cabin's starting to slowly warm up. But yeah, the snow took us totally by surprise. It's wet and heavy. Judging by some of the deeper spots, I think they must have got close to eight inches of wet, heavy snow. That's what snapped off all these trees. Like this one right above me. So we've had to park the truck up by the road because we'd never get out of here. So now we just got to carry everything down from up there. Yeah, we're going to do okay with that. It's good eating right there.
After breakfast, I headed back to the logging road to cut some firewood, but it wasn't long before I hit the first obstacle.
So that was a chore and a half getting in here. A lot of deadfalls down across the road. But we're up here now on the ridge where I cut my firewood. And so I'm going to try to get a load of firewood in the trailer and make it back out. Let me give you a little tour of this spot. I love this spot. We're up on quite a high ridge. Here's all the oaks that blew down a couple years ago. It's a beautiful day. It's actually quite warm. It's probably about 5 degrees Celsius already. You can see there's no end to the nice oak firewood here. It's just laying everywhere. Most of it is suspended up off the ground, so it's not even rotten. I'm going to take you over here to the edge of the ridge. So this is somebody's deer watch spot right here. You can see there's a big valley right down below us. I'm not sure how much detail you can pick it with the GoPro, but way off in the horizon there's another big ridge, bigger than this one. It drops down, I don't know, maybe 300 feet down into the bottom of the valley, maybe a little more. Hooks around that way, the valley gets quite narrow right there. Some spots is too deep, or sorry, too steep to get off this ridge, but right here is not too bad. It's just so much wood laying around. I'd say that one has some serious pressure on it. Eight or nine inch oak tree bent over. Takes a lot of power to do that. This big massive one here is what's bending it down. You gotta be careful cutting these deadfalls though. There's so many things that can uh, catch you off guard because everything's bent over and spring loaded. Take you off your feet pretty quick or crush you. So there's so much here that for now I'm only taking the easy picking stuff. I feel kind of greedy, but I'm the only one that seems to be cutting wood up here. The rest of it's going to rot into the ground. You can only get here on an ATV or, or a, possibly a Jeep. Well, I better get to work. So we got our trailer load of wood. Now we're going to make our way back towards the cabin. Might cut a little bit more along the way. Some of the deadfalls along the road. I'm not sure. I can get a few more pieces on here. It's getting warm. Anyways, I gotta head it out. We actually went back and got another couple loads throughout the day. There's a lot of satisfaction in having a full woodshed, but it's still hard work. And as the sun went down, it was time to get cleaned up and relax for the evening.
So we just bought these two five gallon water jugs. They're pretty handy. They come with a uh, the valve and everything. So they'll work out nice. Use about five gallons or a little less than five gallons for a shower. That's mostly what we bought them for so we don't have to use the uh, water of the rain barrels. Just fill these out at home, bring them up. Good for doing dishes and stuff as well. And they're rated for drinking water. We've always just been buying these jugs of water for doing dishes and, and drinking and cooking with. We always feel bad because it makes so much plastic waste. We go about through about three or four of them a, a weekend. These should eliminate that as well, or at least cut way back on them. So about to start prepping for a shower here. I'll walk you through the process. Okay, step one is we have to fill this uh, pot. I don't know what that is. A couple gallons maybe. Now we're gonna put that on the stove. Now we just let that heat up for about an hour or so. Whenever it gets too hot to be able to put your hand in there. When that's up to temperature, it works out perfectly. You dump one of those pots into a five gallon pail, then fill the rest of the pail with cold water, and it works out to a pretty good shower temperature. We decided to watch a movie while the shower water was heating up. A hot shower at the cabin is like a fancy meal. It just can't be rushed. You just have to sit back and enjoy the process. Okay, so the water is up to temperature. Now we just gotta dump it in the bucket. So now we'll put it back up here and top it up with cold water. Yeah, it's nice. So that's one pot of almost boiling water, which is exactly half of that, so two and a half gallons. Top it up with cold water, it's the perfect temperature for a shower. So now we'll bring this into the shower. So the bathroom is really small, so it's hard to fill them in there. I'll do what I can. You guys have already seen the composting toilet. This is the shower. Poured concrete base. It's all sealed and then uh, galvanized roofing steel on the walls. This is the magic, makes it all happen. Little shower pump. Just click it on. It's got like a five and a half, six foot hose. Shower heads mounted on the wall, pops off, it's handheld as well. So just click this on, drop it in the bucket, and you're good to go. So yeah, it's a nice little uh, self-contained shower pump. I can't remember any of the specs on it now. We've had it for a couple of years. You get, I think it's an hour of run time per charge. We've never ever killed it, but we always end up charging it after two or three showers anyways, just to be safe. Just plugs into a USB port. Yeah, I'll give you a little example. Lots of pressure, lots of flow. We've learned over the years, uh, five gallons of water makes for a good comfortable shower. Gives you lots of time. I don't know what it would be in the, in minutes, but you can scrub yourself from head to toe anyways. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever shown this before. It's a hand forged uh, toilet paper roll. It was a fun little project. You don't really get to showcase your toilet paper roll holders. It's my one chance, my one shot, I'm taking it. Here, may as well get right in there, show you some detail. Show you some detail on that leaf. So that went well. We set the timer 
Uh, five gallon pail lasts five minutes, 30 seconds of shower time. More than enough for a decent shower. So that's it for me. I'm off to bed. We'll see you in the morning. We started in the morning off by cleaning up some of the storm damaged trees. We've really given this little battery powered saw a workout over the last couple of days. And then we saw it. The dynamic tree is split all the way to the ground. So here we are, about to solve a 50 year old mystery. This tree has been known as the dynamite tree for many years. The day we first started clearing the land to build the cabin, an old local man stopped to tell us the story of the tree. Back in the late 70s or early 80s, a road crew had to blast at a ridge in the rock to allow for the new road. The local man that told us the story said he stopped to chat with the crew as they were finishing up. And they told him that they had thrown some leftover and damaged dynamite into the hollow in the big old maple tree. So the old fellow had stopped in to warn us to be careful of cutting down the tree. Now I'd taken the story with a grain of salt, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't just a bit curious. So now nature had finally allowed us to find out the truth. That's interesting. Must be natural, but it almost looks like a veneer. So I think that concludes that mystery. There's no dynamite in this tree. Kind of sad. Made for a good story. But now I'm doubting everything the old man told me. Maybe he's not being watched by satellites either. Doubting the whole thing. So the logs we use here to build this cabin, they're all six by eights. Double tongue and groove with a foam gasket in the center to seal them up. Then there's a 12 inch log screw every three to four feet holding them all together. But when you build with them, they're still green. They've probably been cut three or four months by the time they get to you from the mill and have them planed and everything. So because you built with them when they're still green, you have to allow for shrinkage. And they say about a quarter inch a foot. 
The cabin's been closed in now for about three years, roughly. So the logs are starting to check and shrink. You see some pretty good splits right here. And that doesn't affect anything, just gives it a little bit of character. But the only issue is you're building with them green and they're perfectly straight. You don't know how they're going to warp or twist or anything. So you count on the screws, hold them together to keep it as straight as possible. But you're still kind of at the mercy of letting them do whatever they're going to do. So this wall here, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's actually bowed in from top to bottom, probably three quarters of an inch. We didn't really notice it till we were hanging that shelf in the last video. And you can actually see right here, this window frame, the trim is starting to separate off in the center there a little bit. Now we did actually allow for it in the window openings themselves. There's quite a bit of opening underneath that trim so it doesn't come down and crush the, the window. But we may eventually have to adjust that trim just a little bit. Pop off the two side pieces and trim them up and put them back on. And this door we've already had to rework once. We're starting to bind a little bit. The side here with the latch was actually bowing out and catching on the door. So I had to take the trim off and straighten it up there and fine tune it. So you can see here above the stove, some pretty good cracks right there. So just for an example of how much wood shrinks, these hemlock planks right here that we built this bathroom wall out of, they were already dry for a year, like sitting underneath the tarp after the cabin was built. I thought they'd be pretty much done shrinking. So we built this wall, they were all sandwiched tight, tight together and screwed onto that wall. But now look, you can almost put your fingers between some of them and they're the same height as each log in the cabin. So if you added up all those spaces that are in these planks right now, you know, you'd have well over an inch of shrinkage right there on eight feet. So the logs are doing the same thing. The cabin is slowly getting shorter so one thing we're gonna to have to deal with soon, I kind of slipped my mind, is this spiral staircase is bolted right down to the concrete slab underneath the flooring. One thing I forgot to allow for was this staircase, it's bolted right down to the concrete floor underneath that pine flooring. It runs straight up and it's bolted in through that joist right there. And there's no slots or anything to allow for shrinkage. So in theory, it will be holding that joist up as the cabin's going down if you look over here, that joist is lifted a little bit up out of that notch in that wall. I don't know if it's the joist shrinking a little bit or if it's levering off the staircase. Maybe a little bit of both. So it's a simple fix. Next trip up, I'll just take these bolts out right here and elongate the holes in the wood. And that'll allow the wood to settle down to its natural state. And then we'll bolt it back up tight again. Another example of wood shrinking is these floorboards. They were all tight as can be three years ago when we screwed them down. Again, they were put down fairly green. They were a little bit drier than the logs, but they weren't kiln dried. So even with all these cracks and movement in the logs, the cabin is still tight as a drum. There's no penetrating, like they're just surface cracks that go in maybe about an inch. And this log system is designed to still be tight, even with that much movement. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I just wanted to give a little insight on this style of log cabin. If you have any questions at all about this style, just let me know in the comments down below. I'll get back to you for sure. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.